let's investigate this sequence we were just looking at a little bit more carefully. Because I want to give a different view on what a sequence really is. Now, currently I have it written here horizontally, but I could also go and switch it around and write it vertically as well. That shouldn't make any difference. It's still an infinite ordered list. And I also have another one that we've seen before. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So we can think of these as two different sequences. But because I've sort of lined them up in this nice way, we, we should have this association that like the one over here is associated to the three in the sense that they're both the first terms. And the two here and the minus six are associated in the sense that they're both the second terms. And I can think of this as a sort of a dynamic way. I can think of it as the one goes to the three and the two goes to the minus six and the three goes to the nine. Indeed, the association between here is precisely what that explicit formula tells me. If I choose a different k, it goes to the minus one to the k times three k. So what do I really have here? Well, if I think about my sequences as being an arrow diagram, where I've got a domain here, and I've got a codomain, and then the elements inside of my domain are all mapped to things in my codomain, what I'm describing is a function. Every single thing in my domain goes somewhere, and more importantly, it obeys the vertical line test. There's, there's no element in my domain here that, that splits into multiple different things. Because my association is to take one element, say the kth one, to the kth one over here, not to two different ones. So really what a sequence is going to be then is this function from this particular set to some other set. Or in other words, I'm going to say, this is my formal, mathematically precise definition, a sequence is a function where I'm taking things from the positive integers, that was the one, two, three, four, and I'm going to some codomain that we haven't specified. In, in the other example, it looked like it was integers as well, but it's going to be some codomain. So as an example, let's take the one we just looked at. If I want to describe it in this language, the language of a function with a domain and with a codomain, what I'm going to say is that I have a function f, and it inputs things inside of my codomain, so it's going to input some k. And then I have to tell you what it does to the k. Well, it does precisely what we just saw. It's got that minus 1 to the k times 3k. This could be an example. In other words, if I think of it as a function, it, it inputs the k and it spits out this a sub k. Now, this formal definition of a function, I, I want us to note it and to be there and for us to, to think that sequences really aren't anything new. They're just a special type of function. However, it's really intuitively useful to us if we, if we actually think of sequences more in the informal sense that they're this ordered list of numbers. In other words, I typically don't use the f of k notation at all. When I'm denoting a sequence, I will say a sub k, the kth term of my sequence, and I'll give the formula that depends on k. And I don't make explicit that I'm talking about a function, and I don't make explicit a particular f. However, that is what is going on behind the idea of a sequence.